little quick update for you about what's happened in the shop today. Uh, finished up the, or I have the base castings for the corn, for the grown up corn. There's the end castings, or the base castings, compared to the original corn tool and cutter grinder. So that gives you a little bit of an idea there. Been working on the index centers for the milling machine. Show, saw that video, I've been setting up the tailstock centers. Here's a few other castings I've got going on. Now there's the bearing caps, or the inserts, for the main spindle on the sand molar project. So I've got quite a few pro quite a few pieces all cast for that and machined out. I've got the the drum. I haven't uh, edited any of that video yet, but we've got the main spindle housing in the in the um, drum we're using. So we're making some progress there. These are castings for Hornady 366 auto advanced conversions, and the little round ones on the end here. These are for uh, these are swing out wad guides. So. Those are just the rough castings there. I had a few requests for those, so I'm trying to get those up in machining. This is a angle plate that I'm setting up mainly for the shaper, although it'll have uses on uh, on all of the machines here in the shop. Um, the other casting is that steady rest casting that I'm going to use for the sand fluffer for the handle on it. That's the casting for it. But this angle plate, angle plates were designed to be a consumable item, so. This one I've got quite a few keyways to cut coming up on different pulleys and gears and things like that on the shaper. So I'm going to set up an angle plate to be able to hopefully do that a little bit more efficiently. So that's just the first casting out. It's not a not a spectacular casting by any means, but for use here in the shop, well, we're going to do that. I've got a couple other angle plate projects going on that are um, smaller angle plates that are pretty much a duplication of what Atlas produced. So. Anyway, those I don't have those here. I've uh, been working on the molar. I have the flask done for the gearbox on the... Got a bug crawling along there. What is that? Got a spider crawling. We can't have that. Now can we? Okay. Don't like spiders in the shop. Anyway... Um, got the flask built to uh, hold the gearbox halves for the molar project, so I'll go out and show you that flask. I've got the hardware mounted on it all. I've still got a little more work to do to it just to make it suitable. That's, a, that's an awful big casting, and uh, this flask is going to be bigger than I can handle on my own. So I'll probably get my son to help me a little bit, but I've got to figure out a way that I can handle that. I've got that. I've got uh, ideas for that, so we'll see that as it as it progresses. This is the steady rest that came with the Sheldon lathe that I acquired, and you've already seen the introductory video for that. That uh, I'm going to check casting numbers, but this should be a original Sheldon casting, and I'm going to clean it up and see if we can start utilizing it. I'm not sure that the steady rest that I've been using on my current Sheldon is big enough to handle the two-inch shaft that. Uh, is going to be the main spindle shaft for the molar, so I'm going to have to set it up in a steady rest. So I may, for now, at least temporarily set this steady rest up, and it's pretty well worn and been used and abused, but the uh, fingers on it will probably at least get us through this turning the spindle. But anyway, we'll redo this uh, this steady rest a little bit, and we'll probably make a set of patterns off of it to, to be able to produce these in iron here eventually. Anyway, let's go out and take a look at the sand flask I've got out there. And uh, I'll show you a size comparison with what I've been casting out of. While we're on our way out to look at our molding flask, this is the uh, forge. We finally got it cleaned up a little bit and got a coat of paint on the outside of it. Um, had to redo the fire bricks in it. The, uh, the air tube in there had all rusted away and the uh, supports for it were pretty well rusted out. So I ended up and redid all those. I've shot video of that, but we'll get that put out eventually. I still have to pick up some fire clay and we're going to mix up a grog and kind of fill in this uh, the fire basin itself. We'll close that up a little bit more and fill in some of these damaged bricks and get it sealed off a little bit. And then I've got to finish figuring out what we're doing for the air blower and uh, we'll get this back in use. I've got a couple little projects where we need to uh, heat up some metal and we can do it with oxygen acetylene or we could do it with, uh, with the um, casting furnace, but this is much more efficient and will work much better for it. I've uh, got to shop around. I think I've lost my source of coal. 
So uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do for the little bit that I may do. We may be resorting to barbecue briquettes, which I hate to do, but that will uh, get the first few projects done that I want to get done with this. So anyway, we'll get it back in use. All right, this outer flask is the, and you can see the hardware on the end. Um, this is the flask that uh, I'm going to use to cast the two halves for the gearbox pattern for the, for the sand molar project. Um, for comparison size, and I don't remember exactly what the dimensions are, I should have brought my tape measure out, but for comparisons, the flasks that are inside are pretty much the biggest flasks in that thickness that I normally will cast out of, and they're getting to be the limits of what I can handle by myself as I get older here. Um, and here's three more sets of flasks. I still have to mount the pins on them, but they're, other than putting the pins, the alignment pins in, why they're all ready to go. So they'll be in, they'll be in use here within the next couple, three days. So got all our uh, cast hardware on there. And on these, this is the Chastain hardware that's on these flasks. And I'm kind of phasing this hardware out, but on a flask this big, I went ahead and machined another set of them because this flask, the, the smaller flask hardware, just wouldn't, wouldn't cut it for this. So we've already got it set up and aligned. So anyway, we'll use this flask at least twice and, you know, may never use it again. Anyway, that's what's going on here. So quick little shop update for you. Haven't given you anything for the last few days. Um, here, if I make you sick along the way. Here's the drum we're using for the sand muller. And there's the spindle welded in place inside. We've got a four inch spindle, or it's a four inch pipe for the spindle. This uh, drum's probably gonna get cut down a little bit. It's probably, well, it's definitely a little bit taller than it needs to be. That shaft with the gear on it is the gear that was on the main spindle on this drum. And uh, I'm gonna utilize it for the sand fluffer project. So this is what I had for a door. It just pulled out with that handle on, on the front there. I will probably change that as we as we progress on this, but this drum's ready to have the spindle machine for it and go in. I think I've got about a 12 inch height wall on this. It probably only needs to be about nine or 10 inches. I'm probably gonna cut it down. We'll see. But uh, anyway, we'll clean it up and get that put together. I've got, I've got video of it going to this point, so we'll show you that here before too long. So anyway, a little, little shop update of what's going on. Hopefully you found it a little bit interesting. And uh, any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.